Hi, I'm Mark Pack, editor of Liberal Democrat Newswire and co-author of the party's general election agents manual. Welcome to this, the latest in my election briefing video series in which I'm trying to demystify a little bit of what goes on at election time. Today I'm going to talk about leafleting. Now, I did give it a little bit of pause for thought in picking this subject because it can sound like leafleting is just really obvious and straightforward. You get given a pile of leaflets, you go walking down the street, you put them through letterboxes. What could be simpler than that? Well, there is actually quite a lot more to it than that. Let's start with the basics. When you're going out leafleting, it's really important that you get given a list of roads to deliver and the house numbers, the properties on those roads that you should be delivering your leaflets to. Why does does that matter? Well, first, it's a bit of basic organisation. If you know which streets you're going down and everyone else knows which streets they're going down, you don't end up either double delivering a street or missing one out completely. But also it's important because it's obvious, often not obvious how far down a street to go. Let me give an example that I encountered a week or so ago. I was delivering a street near where I live and about halfway down the street there is this really significant feature that you just wouldn't know about if you weren't somebody who was quite deeply immersed in politics. There was no flag, no sign, no bunting, no customs border post, nothing like that. But halfway down the street, one parliamentary constituency ends and another one begins. So if I'd not known that there was a parliamentary boundary halfway down the street and I should only deliver half of that street as a result, I would have been ploughing on, delivering my leaflets with the wrong candidate name, with the wrong constituency messages in completely the wrong place. So really important that you have a list of uh, streets and then what numbers of properties along those streets you should deliver. That's also really useful when you have uh, those corner properties, often maybe a block of flats or something similar, and it's not really clear which street it's on. If you've got the exact list of streets and properties, then you know for sure, is this one that's down for me to deliver or is it something I should be leaving to someone else? The other thing to bear in mind when you're heading down the street is quite often there are a lot of doors that need delivering but are not immediately obvious when you walk up to a property or when you walk past a property. This happens at street corners. There might be a door for number 56 facing the street, but 56B is a flat where the entrance to it is round the side. And in fact, the door for 56B faces the adjoining street. So as you go down the street, as you come to each junction, well worth making sure you have a good look round the corner just to see if there's another another property or another flat at a property that's round the corner that's on, on your list that needs delivering. The other thing is that even for a house in the middle of the street, nowhere near any other junction, quite often there can be an extra door, an extra flat that isn't immediately obvious. Um, one good tip I always think for the, these sorts of situations is just as you go up to the door, have a look at the number of meter cupboards or the number of rubbish bins or recycling bins that you can see. And if maybe you can see three recycling bins, but only two bells on the door that you're walking up to, that's a pretty good clue that there's almost certainly a third flat, maybe down some stairs or up some stairs or round the side, which has also got its own door and its own letterbox that you'd otherwise miss out. So keep a good eye out for where there might be more than one uh, door at a particular building that needs, needs your leaflets. Now, when it comes to actually getting the leaflets through the letterbox, one of the things, if you've not been delivering leaflets before, you'll very quickly discover is that I'm sure there are some wonderful and lovely and brilliant letterbox designers out there. But oh my goodness, there are some really awful letterbox designers out there who seem to think the purpose of a letterbox is to imitate Fort Knox and not actually to make it easy to get a letter or a leaflet through it. Of course, it makes sense to have brushes and, some, and a second flap and so on to help with good insulation, people keep people's uh, heating bills down and sort of keep people's uh, nice and warm at their home. But really, it's perfectly possible to design a letterbox that both is good at insulation and is good for the basic purpose of getting letters and leaflets through it. Sadly, lots of letterboxes are not like that. So you'll doubtless discover and learn all sorts of little tips and tricks for exactly how best to squeeze bits of paper through different, different letterbox designs. One thing I always try to bear in mind, which I think is, is useful to remember, 
is if you've got a big leaflet, if you sort of bend it gently, so you've got it bent and therefore three or four sort of widths of paper to help push through the letterbox, that can often give you a little bit of extra force to get through the brushes, but then means the leaflet unfurls nice and neatly on the doormat on the other side. If you fold the leaflet really tight and small to try and squeeze it through the crack between the different brushes on the letterbox, problem is it then lands on the letter on the doormat on the other side nice and small and is that much more likely to be overlooked or chewed up by a dog or trodden all over by a child. The other thing to remember when when putting bits of paper through letterboxes, of course, is keep a decent eye out uh, and uh, an ear out as well in particular for an approaching dog. Dogs generally uh, are quite nice creatures, but just now and again, you will come across a dog that really charges uh, any letterbox through which anything comes with with a lot of uh, quite aggressive sounding noises. And sadly, just occasionally, the dog owner isn't that responsible. And the dog may even be quite a fierce dog that will bite at some anything that comes through the letterbox and there's no protective grill or anything on the other side. Very rare to actually have any serious problem or any serious risk, but unfortunately it does occasionally happen. So keep a good ear out. Keep a good eye out as you're putting a bit of uh, a leaflet through the letterbox to make sure there's not a dog about to have a go at trying to snap at your fingers. So one reason why, although I really like listening to audiobooks and, and podcasts as I'm out delivering leaflets, I normally these days only have one earphone in rather than both because that much easier to hear hear the dog charging towards you if you've only got the one earphone in. Also, it's just a bit more sociable and a bit nicer if you're passing a member of the public, if you can can talk to them or if they you know ask you what it is that you're doing, that you can hear what they say without having to fumble with pulling your, your headphones off and the like. Of course, make sure the leaflet goes all the way through the letterbox. Not a good idea to leave it hanging part of the way out. Homeowners and, uh, and, and renters and so on can get understandably really quite irate if you leave a leaflet sticking part of the way out of a letterbox while they may be away on holiday and it therefore gives a sign to all and sundry that perhaps they're not at home. So make sure the leaflet goes all the way through. So a few tips there, make sure you know which streets to do, you know what property numbers to do on the streets, look out for the properties around the corner at junctions, look out for the extra flat doors round the side or up and down at properties, put the leaflet all the way through, avoid the dogs as far as possible and of course have fun while doing it because as I've touched on in some of the early videos in this series leafleting at election time is a really important part of winning votes and it can really help make the difference between having more or fewer Liberal Democrat MPs uh, elected when the votes are counted at the end of end of polling day in a general election. So really hope you found this useful. Hope you are inspired to go out and do some or even more leafleting uh, between now and polling day. And as ever, if you've got any questions or suggestions for other videos in this series, do pop them up in the comments. In the meantime, thanks very much for listening once again.